So other technologies uh, that are impacting the worker landscape in 2020 are like 5G mobile networks. 5G is the next generation of mobile broadband that will eventually replace your 4G LTE connection uh, with exponentially faster speeds and lower latency. You know, 5G operates in three bands. You've got the low band, the mid band, and the high band. Uh, the low band is typically used for LTE, and uh, this bandwidth is nearly completely depleted, and it tops out around 100 megabits per second. You know, T-Mobile is the main player in the low band arena. Now, mid band offers faster speeds and lower latency, but it doesn't penetrate buildings as effectively. It does pretty well, but uh, you know, heavily, uh, heavily metal and, and concrete buildings uh, may make its reception a little tougher without some sort of uh, uh, enhancement. Sprint has the most available spectrum in this band, in the mid band. You know, the latest news is that uh, the final steps of the T-Mobile and Sprint merger are in place. And so that will, that will basically put T-Mobile as uh, the primary holder of most low and mid band uh, spectrum. The high band provides the highest performance for 5G, but the poorest building penetration and the, the smallest coverage area. You know, the speed peaks at, peaks at about 10, gigabits per second, so a lot of speed. With these types of speeds for mobile devices, uh, we'll see a tremendous increase in the use of tablets, iPads, and laptops out in the field. Uh, you know, construction teams, uh, consulting teams, uh, businesses that have uh, a, a lot of people that are in the field, instead of having to do their work and then go somewhere to get connected, uh, it's going to be just as fast, actually faster for them uh, on 5G to be able to do the work where they are. Uh, you know, take trucking and rail transportation. You know, they could be combining with uh, distribution companies and then moving products from the manufacturer to the customer without going through uh, the warehousing or storage costs of, of inventory. Or services like companies having the bandwidth to manage uh, and service things like water, uh, electricity, insurance claims, or even diagnose problems with your car. Yeah, you know, they could provide you an estimate and a scheduling link, and then they come to you and fix your car. So, you know, no more having to take your car into the shop and, and miss a, a day of work or sit, sitting in the waiting room waiting for a you know, timing belt or a fuel pump to be replaced. With the increase in aut autonomous vehicles and the devices that are on the Internet of Things um, and more bandwidth working remotely than in your office, then the world's open to work from anywhere. Once we move our information to a cloud service like Office 365 or Azure or AWS, uh, then we break that dependency on physical location. Information workers don't need to be in cubes in an office building. Now they can work from anywhere. So maybe your workforce for your Dallas-based company is staffed by workers in Michigan that have retooled themselves after leaving the auto industry or the Rust Belt worker. As the baby boomers leave the workforce, we'll see more and more companies moving to information workers based more on the service they provide and less on where they're located. This moves us closer to what we call the gig worker or gig economy.